Welcome back to round four of the Greensboro Pokemon Regional Championship. I am your commentator, Jeffrey Saran Saran, and to my left, Kirk Dube Snacks Dube. Kirk, we had a really interesting match last round between Rayquaza and Buzzgarve. You had to get the pleasure of commentating that one. Yeah, it wasn't uh, wasn't so bad. Couple missteps uh, on on one side of the board allowed the match to seem a little bit more one sided than actually uh, would feel on paper. Mm -hmm. um, but before we dive into round four matchup, uh, I want to talk about Trollandtoad.com real quick. Um, you can get uh, ten percent off using the uh, promo code Greensboro on checkout. Uh, G R E E N S. B O R O Greensboro. Also, uh, great rate of return uh, on their buy list. So yep. check it out if you're trying to make a little bit of extra cash for St. Patty's Day tomorrow. <laughs> um, this matchup, I'm going to assume they have their headsets on. Let's just rock and roll. Two yep. dragon type decks going to be fighting it out, duking it out. Lance, S Lance, Claire, Claire's the other dragon trainer, or Iris might be here. But all the dragon masters out here, bring out the stunts. And Eric Smith. It's kind of it, let me let me just kind of put it this way. Eric's been playing the same deck as last weekend, but he's playing against a deck that he's actually hyped a lot on his uh, channel, Rare Candy, there, uh, and that is Rayquaza e GX with Ho EX from Dark Explorers. Um, Ho EX um, with the rebirth, rebirth ability. ability. Uh, flip a coin if heads, pull it onto your bench. You can attach uh, two basic energy from your discard, so you up uh, Rayquaza's damage output. Yep. Rainbow Ray Rayquaza GX, of course, uh, damage output using that. Eric Smith. Playing what uh, Frank Persick kept calling Splatagucci. Splatagucci. Egg Splat, uh, Alolan Executor, using Double Dragon Energy to come in and do some damage. Propagation Eggs and pitch them in the bin. This is going to be fast and furious. They're not locking down abilities. They're not locking down yep. items. They are trying to chuck haymakers at each other. The big thing here is that um, Jeffrey does not – wow, it's really weird seeing my own name. But Jeffrey, Chris, is the other player. And uh, uh, <laughs> he doesn't have many 90X attackers to combat with a lone executor. So their big thing is he has to hit turn one and start taking KOs quick because a lone executor can get to that 180 number super easy. Absolutely. And we see kind of – I don't want to say run-of-the-mill – Egg splat executor <laughs> deck, but uh, we see a lot of uh, you know the things that we saw in Frank Persick's deck last week. Uh, Sudowoodo Roadblock, uh, mm -hmm. Sudowoodo Watch and Learn because he's playing Counter Energy. Eric Smith's playing Counter Energy. Oracorio, Ditto Prism, uh, Transform Ditto, yep. which has the higher HP and allows you to put a basic on top and then evolve it immediately. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of good stuff going on in Eric's list. Um, he is definitely one of the originators of this list, from my understanding, before Toronto. Okay. So um, has a lot of reps in with this deck. Um, actually got uh, Carl Barone, New York native, yep. uh, onto the deck as well. Um, and I got to chat with both of them about that deck the week leading up to Toronto without having to spoil too, too much. I actually played it on um, PTCGO too. Uh, a lot of success and a lot of fun. So exciting to get this one back on here. Yeah, super excited to see this one here. And it does play like a few shrines also for the matchup as well. Um, in my opinion right now, it is in favor of probably a little bit more on Eric's side there. But I think with the pure like you know uh, ferocity and how fast the way Cross the GX can be, I think we have a chance here to see Jeffrey pull this out as well. Going down, we see a Rayquaza GX start for Mr. Chris and Eric Smith's side. Roadblock Sudowoodo, actually not terrible not in this yeah. matchup. Oh, That is a big Juniper couple, a Grass Energy, Lightning Energy, and the Ho-Oh Rebirth, which is right where you want it. Uh, maybe one heads flip away from coming back into play yep. and boosting the damage output of Rayquaza GX. So we do see here, looks like uh, Ultra Ball dropping to Sky Field. And another Ultra Ball here. Uh, could be seeing either maybe another Rayquaza here or a Let Loose Mark Shadow. Uh, we do see uh, the Rayquaza GX couldn't come down. I'm going to use that Stormy Winds ability here. Discard top three cards of your deck there. And if you find a basic energy in discard pile, you can attach it over to the Rayquaza GX right away. Important, important to note, it doesn't actually have to be discarded mm -hmm. in the three. As long as there's one in your discard, doesn't matter what you dis, uh, what three cards mill off the top, you can attach a basic. Uh, easily a hit, as we knew, because uh, the Juniper got rid of uh, that original grass energy there. Um, uh, Zero Aura, I believe, GX coming down. And there is that let loose right on cue there. That uh, Zero Aura going to allow some good retreating to, to happen between the Rayquazas with his ability. Yeah, free retreat there. If, if uh, it's kind of Dark Cloak with the uh, old Dark Ray EX from Dark Explorers there, if your opponent, if your Pokemon has the Lightning Energy attached to it, they have no retreat cost as well. Uh, but it's let loose here. Going to shuffle player's hand to their deck. Wow, that's a really good let loose for Jeffrey there. Max Elixir, Juniper. I didn't get the catch to see what the last card was, but it doesn't matter. You got Juniper. You're good to go. Yep, uh, three lightning energy there off that Max Elixir. Uh, Marshadow let loose with the let loose ability. Uh, standard all-star. Mm -hmm. And the thorn in most top-level players' side. 
let loose. <laughs> Uh, we do see a pass over into Eric's turn there. Let's see how does Let Loose favorite him there. Up oh, computer search. We're good over here. Uh, computer search pitching, I guess, two Alolan <laughs> executors. Uh, maybe has a stretcher somewhere in the deck to buy that one back. Yeah, I, I believe he plays a few stretchers as well. Uh, he has a stretcher and then uh, you know teammates as well to inverse seeker. So okay, uh, he has a few couple. Uh, he has an option there just with one stretcher there to get those back for sure. Shuffle those back in. Uh, but if you search for sure, being able to search your deck for any card and place that into your hand. So Eric does set up single prize attackers. However, there are some motions Eric has to go through at the start of the game. One, get some eggs or dittos on board. Yep. Two, get your propagation eggs in the discard where they want to be. Mm -hmm. And three, don't computer search away to a lowland executor <laughs> and put that much stress on an early game rescue stretcher to get attackers. I'm really hoping that stretcher is not prized, but another thing to note too, okay, no, he does have two floatstone here to get the pseudo act out of active there. Yep. Right there. Gold rescue stretcher. Eric Smith always won to play max rarity. Um, if you saw him uh, in top eight where he played Rayquaza GX, yep. the deck he's facing down, um, maxed out the whole time. Blinged out. Cynthia, shuffle your hand into your deck, draw six cards. Another kind of standard staple. Mm -hmm. um, one of the best draw supporters in standard currently. Allows you to rinse your hand back in your deck and draw six more. You know, don't have to pitch away all the resources immediately. So the cool thing that, uh, about this deck right now is that you see here that an egg splat attack is a grass and a colorless energy there. So you would think that it would be really tough to attach two energies multiple times to attack. However, because of that dragon typing, there is a card called double dragon energy, which when attached to a dragon type Pokemon, it counts as any two energies for that Pokemon. Shrine of Punishment coming down for Eric Smith. Uh, a couple Skyfields Jeffrey has available to bump that. However, uh, a couple ticks of Shrine damage put those Rayquaza GXs well within the damage range of Egg Splat, which does 60 times the amount of Execute you discard from your hand. And typically, you want one on board, three to discard. Mm -hmm. So you always have you know one to evolve into. Um, that's where the Dittos come into play to allow you to deal a little bit more damage. Ditto, Ditto Prism, for example. Exactly there. Um, and the big thing there is that, you know, uh, x Splat will be able to do, you know, without Choice Band, just 180 damage. There was a really sweet number, but then with the Choice Band, get to the, you know, massive numbers. Take out the Zero Aura and different things of that nature. Ooh, actually, big card here that could help Jeffrey out now that I'm looking at his list a little bit more here. Zerkatry GX. Uh, with that ability there to, be, to, to lock out opponents, not only take any damage from Pokemon that have special energy attached to them there. So, looking at Eric's list. Special energy, special energy, special energy. Uh, it, Jeff's list, just kind of the greatest hits of all, like, the best uh, kind of mainly lightning, but lightning yeah. grass attackers. He actually has the Shaman Prism Star, too. He has a lot. I like, okay. This is, gonna, this is getting more and more interesting as I'm diving into this list here. This is, this is going to be a great game here. Eric let loosing on uh, his side of the board. Prop egg coming down. That's what he wants to see. That's what allows you to obviously bump up to that Alolan Executor and start splatting away. It's like a Nickelodeon game show. <laughs> or is that Gak? Gak? No, Gak was the stuff that you... That's yeah, the Gak, little, the yeah, Gak's was a the putty. children's product. Uh, hard retreat at the egg. Say, take a KO on this, my friend. That's nice. I like that. It puts the egg in the discard, and you have your ditto back up. Uh, if you get your ditto go Guzmed up and knocked out, you still have an egg to evolve into, and you're not completely up the creek. He might be whiffing his elixir. He does with the elixir there. Diminishing uh, returns and max elixirs in the Rayquaza deck because it forces so many energy to get onto the board. Three in the board. There's at least three in the discard. A couple sure in hand. Discard, yep. A couple in the hand. That max elixir this early in the game doesn't really have that great of an odds, but Max Elixir number three of game See, one. Get there. Two, two, three, three four, four, five. There, there you go. The lightning, okay. All right, we're going to be able to attack. Jeff probably wants to get a uh, Lightning Energy onto his active Rayquaza to be able to free retreat. You can free retreat or he just Tempest GX. Do you like a Tempest GX here? Well, now that he has Lele, I did not know Lele was in his hand already there uh, to play supporter, so he's going to have his draw already there. Uh, I'm trying to look here. Does he play an E switch or anything along those lines there? No, so he's going to find his lightning energy or a Guzma. Guzma is fine. Going to uh, chase the Ditto Prism, mm -hmm. which is the easiest route that Eric has to hit that 180 damage. Um, still not an incredibly impa uh, impactful knockout. I really like the retreat to the prop egg. Um, as I mentioned, that allows Eric to still evolve into Lolan Executor and uh, start knocking into these Rayquaza GXs. First prize of the game, going to Jeffrey here, trying to punishment, ticking away at those four GX Pokemon. 
Jeff got to be a little uh, perturbed. Couldn't bump that stadium prop bag off the top for Eric. Um, and I'm not sure. Looks like an ultra ball to rally back, Shaman. Okay. And to propagate. And there is Splataguchi. Oh, no. <laughs> Splataguchi, Alolan Executor, Paradise Draw, Eggplant. Dar uh, eggplant. Eggsplat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are we going to see a Paradise Draw here? Uh, he has no hand right now, so he's going to be venturing to do that for sure. Uh, maybe just going to, yep, retreat, paradise draw, get you six cards. I like that. Eric prop, propping the egg back, putting it on the bench. Again, has to stream the attackers somehow. Missed the DCE, didn't have anything else going on. Shrine ticks are doing a lot of work here. The closer those GXs get to 120 HP, the better off Eric's going to be. Give me six cards. Let's keep uh, let's keep our nose to the grindstone. Interesting enough there. He's still two energy away from KOing this alone on Executor. He's going to need six energy to be able to take it out there. Um, so uh, I would need, uh, he only has one Elixir left, so you have to hit that. And plus he has an attachment here. But I don't think there's much going on in his hand to really perform that play. Strong consideration. The fact that Tapu Lele came down for that Guzma on Ditto ate up that last bench spot that Jeff needed that he could have Ho-Oh rebirthed mm -hmm. to take a knockout. Yep. So maybe a little bit of uh, miss bench management there, but Eric fine taking 150 damage, not getting KO'd, and uh, going into his turn with six cards. Lona Zegator back down, number two. Um, Eric's gonna be able to stream these attackers fairly easily right now. He's just missing the energy, it looks like. I can't really tell all that bling in his hand, what's gold, what's double dragon, it's hard to tell. Um, Ultra Ball though, and, and, never mind. Ultra Ball, uh, originally eyeing up, discarding an N and another card. Oh, like teammates? Yeah, that's a teammates. Yep. Maybe, already gets the other egg splat down, um, but that means Eric doesn't really have any prop eggs in hand no, to I deal mean, any damage. There's one at the bench now, and then the one right there, to, oh, that's a ditto he does evolve from, but. All right. Nope, Ditto's in Ditto Prison. Those are two. No, Ditto Prison is gone. Yeah, so yeah, those two eggs right there. Yeah, under those executors. Versus Seeker. For the Cynthia. For the Cynthia, shuffle up, draw six. What's the card right to the far left of the Marsh Shadow that's glared up? So you see Pseudo Wudo, Marsh Shadow. What's the card to the far left? Oh, Transform Ditto. Transform Ditto. Tr okay. Ditto BCR. Um, again, see, allowing to it's it's a, it's a little less squishy uh, than the eggs, a little bit more difficult to crack. Yeah. Um, yeah, but you can definitely go egg and then transform all in one turn. Yep. Six cards for Eric. Battle compressor finally finding one place. Three copies of that. W uh, definitely a card Eric wants to see in the first two turns. Yeah. Battle compressor kind of unlocking his hand here. Going to put two Propagation Eggs into the discard, perhaps thin out another card, but Eric, that's exactly what he wants to see because that is how he ups his damage. So without the Choice Spin right now, uh, we got to see if he has a Choice Spin or not. I would just see it on the bench alone as Eggator, but not on the active one here. He can attack, um, hit for 120 currently, which will put the Rayquaza at 160, Shrine 170. Uh, so then if taken back into Eric's turn, Rayquaza would be KO'd. Um, but... Uh, we still need the energy here, and a choice would just go ahead and solidify the KO if he has it all. Uh, can't really tell what energy might have come down. Counter energy. Okay. Counter energy on a little executor, double egg. That's 120. That's up to 160. Mm -hmm. um, shrine tick, 170. Tick back, knockout. So Eric eating two prizes going back into his turn. It's got to feel great, especially because he put a Guzman discard, which means he can navigate to the Pokemon he wants and still hit in for some take, value. Yeah, next turn he could take a. What was it? It's a red cross to the following turn there and lose three energies. Yeah, Jeffrey needs to get some get some uh, energy on the board here quick here because he wants to stream with. Um, Ray Quasi GX. You almost think like, what if he went after att attaching his Aura and using that as a, as a Pokemon? Because it's not like dependent on having a lot of energy on board there. Um, you could still do was a Plasma Fist for the 160 there, and then once you can't attack again, retreat back into Ray Quasi GX for another KO. Jeffrey promoting Marsh Shadow, just trying to stem the bleeding, trying to not give up too many prizes unnecessarily. Eric obviously taking two prizes going into his turn. Double Dragon Energy coming down on Alolan Executor. That Pseudo Udo has free retreat. And if we have Versus Seeker in Eric's hand, that's going to be a Guzma on another Squish target. And if I'm Eric, I would be eyeing up the Rayquaza on the bench. Oh, 100%. That's the only threat right now on the board. It doesn't even that much of a threat right now. It's only doing 60 damage. 
Uh, he would need a Hoa Rebirth. Oh, Fob. Okay, he's compressor into Fob. Okay. First, Jeffrey needs to attach a Lightning Energy onto that Rayquaza for it to do anything. Yep. Um, getting rid of Faba, I don't think uh, Eric's going to see a lot of mileage out of that. But thinning out the deck, Battle Compressor, there's that Watch and Learn Pseudo Wudo that we saw STL Simon Trosilakas uh, leverage very well in Toronto last week um, against those Zorark decks. If Eric's, uh, you know, if Eric's last card or one of his cards in hand is a Versus Seeker and chasing down the Rayquaza, I'm Jeffrey, I'm scooping up my cards because yeah. there's, it, it's just, uh, it's elementary at that point. Yeah, it's just super tough for Jeffrey. He has to have a super explosive turn like this next game too to even keep up with Eric in a sense. And here's the Lysander right there. Lysander on cue had it the whole time playing one Guzma, one Lysander. Um, keep, keeping himself light on his toes, giving himself max options when it comes to gust effects. And um, knockout. Egg splat, bang, Oof. knockout. Yeah, knowing that you got to take six individual prizes right now, I mean, and Jeffrey, if I was in Jeffrey's shoes right now, which is really still weird saying that, <laughs> uh, we got I got to scoop it up and go to game two here. You got to have a seriously explosive turn with this deck. Hopefully, not hit the um, the pseudo widow here. However, Zerkatry is a start, but he has to have a way to get the Zerora and the Tapulili off the board. That's actually not even a concern um, if I'm Eric because he has double dragon energy, because. Um, I don't think that Executor is getting knocked out. Mm -hmm. there's, there's bound to be another energy in Eric's hand or deck somewhere, and that's just one attachment knockout well, away. Yeah, there's, there's, there's numerous and there's numerous outs here. You know, went from uh, Guzma play there, like you mentioned right now, to Shrine just taking away, taking the KOs as well. There's just numerous uh, outs on Eric's board that Circuitry is not going to be able to do enough. Uh, Tapu Koko Prism is that Dance of the Ancients we just saw putting a Lightning Energy on Circuitry GX and Zera Aura GX. Dowsing Machine finding a Max Elixir, and as we discussed, the the hit rate on this can't be that high anymore. However, Jeffrey says, take your take your statistics, shove them. I'm hitting <laughs> I'm hitting this for another Lightning Energy. Lightning Energy, nice going on these two attackers that actually don't need Grass Energy to function whatsoever. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a start. However, Marsh Shadow let loose in the active, Zerkatree GX being built up on the board, and two GX Pokemon that are on the verge of being KO'd. Can't feel too good. Rusty Stretcher here. Does he have a Lele or another Marsh Shadow in the discard pile there? Shame, they're going to draw six. Might as well. Uh, anything on your board is a liability to get yep. knocked out for two prizes. Not see, more so. see more cards, keep it going. He has not seen energy. He's an elixir. No, that's not. Yeah, he says, does see his last elixir here? That's the fourth elixir, yep. fifth of the game because of the dowsing machine. Dowsing machine, yep. Does he hit it here? And, then, and he also needs a way to retreat the Mars Shadow. <laughs> does get the lightning. Lightning energy abound. Jeffrey just needs a way to get the Mars Shadow out of the active. Eric's like, I'm going to take a peek at your discard here. Let's see what we're working with. He hasn't attached yet either. Hasn't attached yet, but also, as we mentioned, has not actually found an energy in hand. He has a Juniper he could play, but it also depends on how his, de his deck has to be super thin at this point. Honestly, I will have to say that one of the biggest things to slow down Jeffrey has been that Roadblock Sudowoodo. It really, really has missing that key KO on that Alolan Executor after it Paradise Drew was unfortunate. Again, benching Tapulele to chase the Guzma the previous turn uh, didn't really result in uh, what Jeffrey was trying to eye up. Grass Energy going to hit the Marshadow, let loose. Uh, does have a retreat of one. Hard retreat into Zerkatry. Zerkatry protected by... Uh, uh, protected against Pokemon that have special energy on it, the flashing head, uh, uh, not attack, excuse me, ability, using Rumbling Wires 100 and discard the top card of your opponent's deck? Yep. The, s the slow grind. <laughs> it, might be an, it might be another win con he might be trying here. <laughs> Used Lightning GX. Put a card from your opponent's hand into their prizes. And Jeffrey... Throwing bows, trying to figure out a way to get back into this game. I, I mean, that was Eric's win con right there, taking right away there. So a good, good call on Jeffrey's part there to. <laughs> uh, it use, is to note. It GX is to, to note as somebody who's announced Lightning GX a lot, that prize is actually supposed to be shuffled in. So Eric is not supposed to know the location of that versus seeker. It does not say shuffle on the GX card. There is that just like a no notion because it just says add it to the prize card. Add, add the card to you from your hand to the prize for, cards. From my understanding, it's sh you you should shuffle in. Otherwise, it kind of div like it it doesn't become a random draw anymore. 
But uh, yeah, but I wonder what's the point of that GX tech there, you know, just to, for it to be placed into the prize cars there, because I believe what's the uh, what's the one card, Gladion, for example, there. That's one that actually specifically states to shuffle because of the you're looking at all your prize cards now to get all the information there versus just one card as the information there. Completely fair. Uh, Cynthia going to be played to draw Eric six cards. Uh, it's definitely something to look into in between, uh, in that's between that's uh, rounds that's or lunch games break goals. Have you. That's lunch break goals. I'd be curious about that. I mean, every time I've lightning GX, I've shuffled it in. Maybe I was just given uh Yesterday, the lead challenge had that same situation where I had that played against me there. I didn't know if I needed to shuffle or not, so we'll see. We'll get a judge ruling. We'll go, we'll go find Drew. Just, just to pass, shrine damage ticking up, although Eric not announcing anything. I mean, Damage still flowing. <laughs> there's there's 90 on a zero, so 100 more there. 80 on a lele there, so 90 more there. So, uh, ooh, shaman, prison star, ops not to take it, take the attach there. Okay, no bench there. Oh, because Sudo Udo couldn't do it. Yeah, Sudo Udo roadblock just throwing a wrench into all Jeffrey's plans. Uh, Skyfield still not gonna give you what you need, but it does get rid of that shrine, which has been on the field a lot and for a very long time. Very, very thin deck here. Jeffrey's going to put the foot to the foot to the pedal here. Hope we get some of these KOs. Unfortunate that, you know, <laughs> a little deck towards 160 HP, and he's only able to remedy wires for 100. It's going to take two knockouts just to get two attacks just to get one prize. And coming down for Jeffrey. Uh, he will be drawing four. Eric will be drawing three, worth noting. Eric, and now... I, I really like Jeffrey do using Lightning GX because Eric now has to take two knockouts. Um, and that's <laughs> important because uh, Eric Smith only plays three versus Seeker. Mm -hmm. Lysander and Guzman in the discard. One copy is in the prizes. One has been used before, and he only has one left. So Eric needs to grab the, li the oh, versus Seeker oh, off of the good, prizes. Good, good point there. Good point there. All right, we do see the field blower there. And the Shrine's gone down now, too, so the ticking damage is, is irrelevant. Shrine, uh, excuse me, field blower going to knock off the sky field from Jeffrey's side of the board. Going to knock off the choice band so Eric can f <laughs> make that Alolan Executor a little lighter, float back to the bench. We have another Alolan Executor coming up. It's clean. It won't be able to hit in for damage because of Zerkatry GX's flashing head ability. However, it will be preventing Jeffrey from taking prizes. Now, Eric has to be thinking don't give up prizes. Also, look at the size of Jeffrey's deck. Yeah, it, it, he's, he's kind of holding out now, and he opts to do uh, the draw draw attack there for no energy. They're drawing back into six cards. Paradise draw, going to get Eric his six cards in hand, and just a pass over to Jeffrey. Grass energy coming down on Shaman. Are, what are we going to see here versus Another Seeker N? N. I may have held that grass energy there, honestly, if I was Jeffrey, just to have more cards in deck. Because really, your win card right now is just a wall behind a Zerkatry GX. Yeah, wall behind Zerkatry GX. Keep announcing Rumbling Wires and hope it's good enough to get you there. Rumbling Wires' tangential effect of milling a card off of Eric's deck may become relevant. What we see there, there's a Rainbow Energy that's got dropped there and it got hit for the 100 damage there. And let's see what he top decks. Was that a Shrine of Punishment? Yes. Sure was. Mm. Shrine off the top. Definitely want to play that one down. Jeffrey threw two Skyfields, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and that Shrine might stick for a while. Yeah, I'm thinking about like, you know, Jeffrey's next game right now. I mean, we still have to conclude this one here, but I think it's going to end up being a, a win for Eric, either via Deck Gals uh, or Eric finds that last verse seeker. Um, but I think, you know, Jeffrey needs to play without Skyfield. Just hold the Skyfields for a stadium bumps there or just play with the five Pokemon game. Uh, as long as Eric doesn't, you know, put that Sudowoodo down. But there's definitely win con still in Jeffrey's side. Eric taking a pause for the call is going to figure out how to navigate the rest of this turn after putting 100 damage on that Alolan Executor. Yeah, I'm, cur I'm still curious why he promoted that versus the Marshall. I guess because he, he wanted to do that Paradise Draw attack to get him back into the game. So, so right now Eric doesn't want to give up any prizes because Jeffrey's ends are worth more now. So if he gives up a prize through Marshadow on Rumbling Wires, Jeffrey only now ends himself to three. Okay. And if the deck out is where you think you have to pivot to because of what resources are left, then that's that's the way you, you go about that. Okay. However, it looks like Eric um, just had forced to pass back, let the shrine damage tick up, and Jeffrey just going to announce an attack, take a prize. 
and a mill of the another double dragon energy off of Rumbling Wire. Eric explaining Rumbling Wire discards a card, my friend. You hit a good one. <laughs> I'm going to promote uh, this pseudo wudo light on its feet with a float stone. Um, still got to draw for tar for turn. Or Sycamore? Oh, Sycamore. Sycamore. I see a couple Sycamore, a couple draw based supporters in Eric's hand. Not particularly what he wants to see. Thumbs the Lysander to the front. Does he have the Verse Seeker in hand? He does. Yeah, I thought I saw the Verse Seeker. So that was so on his end to three, he drew Versus Seeker, X Y Z top deck Sycamore. Well, potentially that yeah, probably that's what it was, was there. Yeah, and he probably did the uh, Paradise Draw attack to get the remaining cards he has in hand there. But yeah, I guess if he has game in hand, why is he? Uh he doesn't have game because of Lightning GX and other prize was added. So ah, Eric okay. needs to make sure he knows exactly which Pokemon he wants to knock out here. Which uh, is, at this point, effectively anyone that isn't Zerkatry. So here's an interesting thought experiment. Uh, because this Pokemon's going to, go, going to go get knocked out, probably by Rumbling Wire, do you take the Marshadow so when Jeffrey ends, you get two chances at drawing what you need? What do you mean there? So, Eric, if he has Versus Seeker in hand, can take a knockout on any GX on the board, yes. right? EX or GX. Yep. However, what I'm saying is if Eric takes the knockout I got you. on so the Marshadow, he only gets two prizes go to, now. goes to two prizes, and, and Versus Seeker will be one of them. Yep. Um, to give him a higher chance of finding teammates, yep. finding. Yep. So, but I get what you're saying there, though. Like, more, one extra card to draw off this next end there, the following end of the next turn there, so he has more chances to hit the Versus Seeker he's about to grab off the prizes, yes. So we're just going to egg Splatteroonie for 120. That's good enough for a knockout on Zoraora at GX. Eric's going to get a crack at two prizes uh, before. Or a Corio could be, could be important to, uh, Ooh, to yeah. eat the Marshadow. Yes. The Marshadow or even just like, yeah, whatever's going to happen. This is going to keep ticking here. So Lele is going to be down to, what, 60 HP left? And Shaman also with 60 HP. So... Yeah, which are easier knockouts than Marshadow, presumably. And back to his turn, just five. So, yep. But there's a sky field off the top deck. And that's maybe what Eric was looking at in the discard. Take a big knockout here, look at the discard, set up another attacker that's not necessarily an egg. Eric's hand is actually on a prop Ooh. egg, too. So he's, he has first secret hand to end, too. So he bumped the stadium to end to one. Bump the stadium, end to one. And I think he one-shots everything else on the board right now. I think everything is 100 HP or less. I can't tell what that, that Pokemon is in the glare to the like left middle right there, or it's like card from the left. Uh, uh, so another Mar Shadow. So yeah, everything on that board at the bench is rumbling wires is in range. Yeah, one real out. Yeah. So turn around here, turn around here. Let's see what the top deck is off the or the discarded card. Counter oh, energy. Dis he discarded counter energy off rumbling wire. He discarded oh counter energy off gosh. rumbling wire. That's the second energy he's hit. Oh, my oh goodness. Oh, man. So, uh, Jeffrey clawing his way into this, finding a lane and trying to exploit it as much as possible. Did Eric hit an energy in his draw step or his other card? Paradise draw. Oh, my gosh. Paradise draw. How many cards he has left in deck? No way. Okay. No way. He, he has more than six. He has more than six here. Yeah, but we, uh, does Jeffrey have another verse here? He's played, what, Paradise three so draw. far? One, two, three, four... Five. I don't see the verse seeker. I don't see. I it. don't see, I don't see a versus seeker. Um, yeah, well, if it comes off the rumbly wires this turn. So if he finds any energy that he can put on Oracorio. Yeah, he, any energy he, there. He, yeah. He, it doesn't matter. He just needs to get that Alolan Executor out of the active. Had to Paradise draw. Did he find the versus Does seeker? Though? The and end. rumbling wires could mill the last versus exactly, seeker. Exactly. Yeah. Rumbling Wires is so strong. Who's the real mill deck here? <laughs> Jeffrey says, I don't need Waylords. Rumbling Wire 100% of the way. So Dude, this uh, game he, has... So here's the thing here. His shame in hand here. Is he going to dig for this? Ah, uh, so uh, does he... We gotta, I want to know these versus your counts here. I know for sure I'd like to play three so far. Jeffrey has. Jeffrey's Jeffrey played three. Jeffrey's played three? So he has no versus seekers left. He's a, He also runs three just like Eric Smith. Okay. Or Eric runs four, actually. Guzma on Oricorio. Hard retreat. Hard retreat to Shaman? Yes. Take out the win con. But. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Rumbling wires. It's the end. Okay. It's the end. But it, uh, what, how else does Eric win this game now? 
He has, he has, to, get a, he has, to, he has a double dragon in hand. He has Se to hit versus Seeker. Seeker Guzma. He has Verse Seeker? He, he does! does! Versus Seeker! Verse Seeker, so, so, so he has Lysander in deck. Yeah, he has Lysander in the discard pile. He has Lysander and Guzma. He has the yep. choice. Yep, there it is. Golly. Oh, man. Jeff making it uh, a lot closer. Bringing it than, down. Than maybe it deserved to be. It, what, what I think it came down to, in my opinion, one, saw Lane, stuck with it, went for it. Yep. Not my personal path. I probably would have scooped it up and give myself more time for game two and three. Yep. But he said, this is my line. I'm hitting it, and I'm hitting it as hard as I can. Yep. And then rumbling wires away to energy that could have gone on Oracorio to win the game. Yep. Uh, and it, yeah, ultimately, I think the biggest the biggest uh, hi hindrance there was that uh, Roblox Sudowoodo. He couldn't he couldn't get any ho-hos out. Um, and he, uh, he tried to bench additional Pokemon, was not able to do so there. I think five is a sweet number for him there. I think he holds out Skyfield to bump the Shrines. That Shrine Jammers ultimately killed him there because that's how Oreo Corio and, uh, and, and I guess in this case, Lone Zegator was able to get to that number. But... Um, yeah, hold out those sky fields and just work with five bench. Um, and hopefully either you prioritize taking out that Roblox Sudo Wudo because you're going to take one prizes anyway, so it doesn't really hinder you to not go after it. Right. Jeff, a couple – I would have loved to see him keep that bench spot open to be able to use uh, Tapu – or to not put down Tapu Lele to get the Guzma yep. because effectively the knockout on the Ditto wasn't a lot of value. Yep. Um, love to keep that spot open, rebirth, ho oh, attach. Yep. Uh, you know, go for the heads flip. And then if you don't hit heads, sure, then bench yep. Tapu Lele, right? Like yep. you can do that. If you hit heads, you can do it. Yep. If you hit tails, you're on that same plan, anyways. Um, but that would have unlocked a big knockout for him on a lone executor that got to paradise draw Eric into six and attack the following turn for a knockout. Absolutely there. Another card that um Jeffrey could take advantage of here is the Shaman Prism Star. Uh, is, is that a, a Revenge Blast attack? That'll let him do uh, 30 and then 30 times more each prize he's taking there. Uh, sorry, uh, Flower Storm. Uh, that's what the attack is called there. And he'll be able to uh, do the 30 times each uh, prize card has been taken. Uh, sorry, no, read that wrong. We're bringing the old uh, Shaman EX attack there. Uh, the attack that does 30 times the amount of basic energy attached to all of your Pokemon there. So That's a big Another one prize hitter for this Rayquaza deck. Sp spoils a lot of energy onto the board. Um, not quite a Revenge Blast uh, Cabalion mm -hmm. or a Rally Back Shaman. Rally Back Shaman uh, there. But Shaman, another squishy Shaman, able to deal a lot of, uh, of damage for a single prize. I was thinking of that old uh, Shaman EX that uh, was called Igor. He played the World Championships there with the Revenge Blast attack there. Uh, that he had in his version Genesec deck. Zero Aura in the front for uh, JC. Probably not too bad. Uh, Thunderclap zone, gonna allow that to retreat with that lightning attach. Um, love the mystery, uh, mysterious treasure. Discarding a lightning energy guarantees a hit on mm -hmm. uh, Stormy Winds with Rayquaza GX if that's the path you want to go. Also, mysterious treasure giving Jeff access to uh, his Let Loose, Let loose as well. Yep. Let's see here, Rayquaza GX here. We see a Shaman, Max Elixir. So it's going to be a really explosive start here. I, I think he just goes for it. I, I don't think he holds back playing the Shaman or anything like that there. And as a matter of fact, if he even fills up his five bench, he can still um, get rid of the Shaman off Pitch the Pitch the Shaman, yep. yep. This, is th this deck was built, to, built for speed, right? Yep. You have to go no fear. You have to attach all your energies. You have to go big. And the idea is to put your opponent on such a far back foot. Mm-hmm. That then when they finally establish and start taking knockouts of their own, it just doesn't matter. Ooh, the natural let Great loose. start for Jeffrey. Hasn't played a supporter yet this turn. Mm -hmm. If he hits a supporter off of this Marsh Shadow let loose, um, can only expect him to expand his lead and expand his board state and really hoping that Eric can brick. And looking at the contents of Eric's deck, there are some. There are four duds he could draw here mm -hmm. and just be stuck with a lone ditto BCR. Yeah, Jeffrey still needs a, a little bit more to go off right now. Uh, I, I'm hoping here he finds a supporter here as well as like additional additional energy to attach. Maybe some compressor to get the hose down. We do see an elixir, stretcher. Ooh, Skyfield. I didn't see what that fourth card was uh, or a third card there. Um, but hold on. Stretcher, elixir. Right, nice elixir. Go for him now. Go for him now. Get him out. Uh-oh. Five, six. Mm. Oh, miss. All right. Uh, you know, 50% success rate for Jeffrey. So far. Uh, hurts, though. You're playing 14 uh, basic energy there, so you hope you hit one there. But you know what? It happens. Statistics. Actually, Yeah, actually, I think his uh, probability was actually a little higher. Um, or, or the percentage of hit has been a little yeah. higher. Eric Smith finding that shrine of punishment early, uh, which is exactly what he wants to see. Battle Compressor going to make sure he's not benched out here on this single attack. Uh, propagation 
ex execute, excuse me, uh, two copies going to this card, make it three. All three going down. Sure, he has that ultra ball That'll as well. Uh, I guess yeah, he hit to both compress there, so he wants to get get all the eggs out. I wouldn't mind seeing, actually, you know, with Eric knowing that Zerkatree might be on the horizon, I do not want to expend my versus seekers too early. Mm -hmm. So, obviously, Eric, if he has to play a draw supporter this turn, um, needs to compress a draw supporter if he has versus seeker. Mm -hmm. But knowing that he only plays three copies. You want to conserve those. Exactly. Knowing that Jeff pivoted so successfully to that Zerkatry GX, mm -hmm. you have to keep that in the back of your mind that you need those versus seekers throughout the course of this game. And I wonder if, he's, if, if what Eric's thinking right now, because you know, typically you see this uh, Rayquaza deck obviously explode each time it can, and it obviously just off this let loose here, it did, uh, did nothing. It was null there. So I'm, uh, I'm sure Eric's going to understand that he's playing on the back foot right now, and he can take a little bit more time getting set up. Eric throwing away a Faba, a Lysander, and a Mr. Mime with the bench barrier ability. Uh, not going to see a lot of mileage in this one. Get those out of the deck. Don't want to see him at all. Mm -hmm. um, Eric going to shuffle up real quick. The way he's been playing this hand, my heart of hearts tells me he's got a draw supporter as well. Jeff kind of snapping his fingers like, eh, well, I tried to let loose him into a dead hand to steal a game, and it didn't quite Oh, uh, Roblox Sudowoodo right down as well, so he wasn't able to get enough cards up to kind of mitigate that off there. Unfortunately, that's going to slow him down a bunch, but three eggs. Uh, getting it organized. He's probably going to Ultra Ball then, I'm guessing. Or he's going to play that end. Bench is one prop egg and no draw support. No, that's all an end. Okay. Interesting. Just a pass. Okay. So Jeff really has to consider what he wants that fourth bench spot to be. Mm hmm. Energy attachment, Guzma. Okay, change of plans. Free retreat, thunder, uh, thunderclap zone. Uh, brings that uh, Rayquaza GX ready to drag and break uh, and start taking some knockouts. Yeah, right now, if, if Eric doesn't, is not on the gas right now, it doesn't have much going on. Yeah, definitely just, just you know, apply pressure with the Dragon Brick attack from Rayquaza hit for 120 right now. Ah, teammates. Teammates off the top. Mm. That was what he drew off the top, was mm. it not? Does he have energy in hand already? He could probably just go to Lola and Zektor and maybe another compressor to get the other egg in there if it's not prized, because right now he doesn't have enough to KO. Maybe a sh probably a Shrine also, or a Verse Seeker to repeat this uh, this stretch here. Not a lot of damage on Jeffrey's board, so what I like is a Lola and Executor here. Um, maybe a Versus Seeker. Mm -hmm. And then Paradise Draw. Yep. Get your hand back up. Put it on Jeffrey to get another two energy Ooh, or whatever. about Let Loose as well, but... I see chooses let loose, wants I, to see more cards. I, I guess so, but at the same time, I, I'm feeling that Jeffrey, if, if I was an Eric right now and not knowing what I'm like seeing right now on the stream, obviously, but that's two turns in a row where Quasi didn't do anything. I'm not sure I'm going to give him another chance to re refresh his hand. Alolan Egg, definitely one of the cards chosen in hand. Shrine of Punishment coming down. Choice Band, let loose. So essentially for Eric, got to choose two cards and then effectively play another judge. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a good draw from there. I mean, he's going to end up doing a uh, Paradise Draw regardless um, this turn. I, I guess inevitably, too, if he can get the other egg, he could get to the KO as well. Was that 61, 20, 150? So, yeah. Um, but I don't know. I would like to just seeing the Paradise Draw. Seeing four cards here. Maybe Eric's thinking, if I hit the uh, DDE, Double Dragon Energy, I'll attack. If I don't, Paradise Draw is fine, too. Uh... That is the rally back. That's the rally back shaman. Yes. So many shaman rally options. back and flippity flap. <laughs> Eric taking a look, propping another egg onto the bench, which I think he's assuming that um, this alone executor can get knocked out potentially. So unless in a, without a ditto or anything else under reg that regards to chain another Lone Zaytor next turn, he has to get that propagate egg on the bench. I really like uh, Paradise Draw, how it allows you to discard a card, discard mm -hmm. cards before drawing up, uh, allowing Eric there to use the oh, oh. Watch and Learn Pseudo Wudo. There's Zerkatry. Zerkatry coming down. And a Chorus. There we go. That chorus for eight. Jeff Jeffrey was owed a good uh, let loose after the uh -huh. let loose he provided Eric. So Zerkatry GX coming down. Eric can't be too elated to see that. However, Jeffrey having to take 
five, uh, excuse me, six, pri excuse me, five more prizes. And if he leverages to Zerka Tree, that's a slow grind. Oh, uh huh, one hundred percent there. I think, I man, I think you still put the pressure with Urquaza right now, honestly. Especially since you, you see that uh, you had to put the uh, other alone executor da alone execute down on the bench there, so he has to he has to know that he, Eric does not have everything currently. They only one fifty. Ah, that Sudo Widow is putting in work right now. He can't rebirth Holo or anything along those lines there. No elixir, just short. Eric has to feel good about that. Tick up, and even with just two eggs uh, at his disposal to attack. Oh, Shrine, shrine he right only back. He two copies of Shrine. It's like it's been here all game. It just never goes away. Was that a counter, counter energy? energy? That unlocks an attack. But only, it's only going to do 60 damage right now. Well, 60, 90, Shrine Tick, 100, it's not nothing. Yeah. And uh, another uh, Alone Lending Zek built up. Uh, next attack's going to be stronger. So we have an Egg in the active, Egg on the bench, and we only have one Egg in the discard. Is the other Egg prized? I think it's safe to say that it is prized there because with between how many compressors he has played so far. Uh, that could have that, that other egg could have easily been the mine that he compressed as well. So I, I want to make sure say that it, it is prized right now. So a hit in for a hundred, including the shrine tick. Over to Jeffrey. Adjusting the damage there, making sure it's all accounted for. Jeffrey's gonna get a knockout. Counter energies are still gonna be live on Eric's side of the board. Ooh. Grass energy coming back down See, to the shaman. So with the Shaman attachment, though, however, I would almost want to prioritize getting the Zerga Tree um, ready, to locked and loaded there, because the Shaman, once the Rayquaza GX gets knocked out, it's not going to do that much damage. Oh, oh he's going to do a retreat? Okay. Eyeing up a Guzma. We already had the manual attachment for the turn. Skyfield bumped the Shrine. So he's going to be able to one-shot this. Okay, I like this. So he's going to one-shot this one there, and the other one is still within an easy knockout anything really which could be that shaman yeah shaman can definitely uh potential the knockout or leverage the potential of a knockout next turn he does have the other grass energy in hand which and is a verse seeker and just taking a knockout and a prize just above 10 minutes left jeff's got to feel just got to feel his internal clock and needs uh needs to make sure that uh he's moving at the best pace he can while making correct plays uh, Eric sorting out the two prop eggs so we can follow where uh, where those are at all times. Taking a look at the discard, Marshadow let loose with the floatstone attached in the active. Let's see here, rescue stretcher, rescue stretcher. That's gonna be uh, that's gonna be three shuffled in. You got to put the mine back in, Eric. Ooh, robot oh, watch and watch, watch and learn, learn. pseudo wuda. Um, <laughs> he copy back of the <laughs> Zerka Tree's wires attack and start milling him back out. Who knows? And it hits for weakness, but won't hit him at all. No counter energy won't be able to work on that. No type of energy on Eric's side of the board going to work against Zerka Tree today. <laughs> Zerka Tree now putting in work in two matchups. We saw it earlier with the Whales deck against uh, good old Rahul. And, uh, yeah. Versus Seeker for teammates. Obviously, Eric just uh, rescue stretcher with three Pokemon. Just sent him on top of his, uh, his deck, knowing that he was going to mm -hmm. go back in with the teammates. So I'll probably grab a ditto here for sure. And, uh, hmm. He already has the energy on board there. So probably the ditto and another Verse Seeker. Ditto Prism, okay. Ditto Prism. That o unlocks that big damage because mm -hmm. you can discard three eggs. Uh, it's a great way to finish the game. Yep, Ditto Prism Star and a Versus Seeker here. I think he's just doing another inventory check right now. Um, see how many attackers he has the left. And most likely, more importantly, those Versus Seekers there, because that's now one down, only two left for him to use for any kind of Guzma or teammate chains. Eric taking a look back at the Duke cards, making sure they didn't change since he set them down. <laughs> Shuffling up his deck. Present to your opponent, put those two cards in your hand. Mm. Time to make some moves. Eric might step up, go for an egg splat, take a knockout. Ditto Prism on the bench. Right, we're going to see a knockout here. Shaman's probably going to come up here next uh, for, the, for, their, for the return knockout as well. Uh, while 
Now here's the thing. So Shaman has what 90 HP. It has eight. The Shaman 80, person sorry, has 80, 80 HP. HP. So that's a mm -hmm. super easy knockout for Eric. Hmm. But Jeffrey can't pivot to Zerkatry yet. So the only thing, so there's an, there's, he can, if he had to tap Coco Prism, he can do Dance of the Agents there to attach energy to both Shaman and Zerkatry, and then mainly attach to whichever he wants to pivot to. I'm just not sure the contents of his hand right now. Or a choreo, or a choreo of Ooh. Jeff's own. Jeff, okay. Great look here. We do know there's at least two eggs in the discard. Uh, Mr. Mime, so that's three. Yeah. Um, so I mean, that's for sure. Oh, is it, uh, the, oh, act, the, active, the act is only one HP left, so it's, it's perfect. Great way to soften up. It, oh, man. It, what if there's five Pokemon in Eric's discard? Is that a knockout on Ditto Prism and the active? Oh, that would be awesome. That would be both there. Oricorio finding this way uh, after the big showing of uh, Night March last weekend, finding its way in the deck. In both of these players' decks. I'd venture to say that Oricorio is probably the most added card from between Toronto to Greensboro. Guzma up the Sudowoodle without a flow stone. Okay. And we've got a plan. All right. All right. So he's just going to like Oricorio spread for a few. Yeah, take the knockout on the uh, This is great because it, for it forces Eric to make him use a Verse Seeker for a Guzma instead. Oh, man. If, you had, if you have three, if he had three damage, he could have put it all on Ditto Prism. No, that wouldn't have worked. I was thinking uh, Transform Ditto because when you drop it back down to it 30, egg, it, it, it would trigger yeah. the knockout. Um, so now there's four. There's five Pokemon in Eric Smith's discard. Uh, Alolan Executor did come down, I believe, uh, on the uh, Ditto Prism in the corner. Mm -hmm. Two damage on it. Eric taking a quick look at the discard. Uh, Sudowoodo locked in the active. Guzma is somewhere, but it was not compressed away. But that's the best thing, though, about us, too. Even if he did compress the Ditto away, like I was saying, he can't use teammates now to get any of the cards he needs. He's going to use a verse secret to Guzma up something else. But he looks like he's going to be eyeing down the teammates. Yep. So this, unless this other float stone is uh, prized, he's probably going to be opting to get the other float stone. That was a quick grab. have to think that that one's a float stone. Oh, there it is right there. So a flow stone energy to take the KO here on the or or choreo. Take a quick look. I wonder what the stretcher number is. And what's what's really nice here is uh, there's a bit of damage on there. Shaman, he does have that grass energy, I believe, in hand. No, put it down on or choreo. I was gonna say Shaman, great attacker to step up mm -hmm. and uh, start swinging. Um, Yeah, next turn, Jeffrey's going to need a uh, uh, Tapu Koko Prism to Dance of the Ancients there and then mainly attach to the Zerkatry to um, uh, bring back some pressure to Eric's side. That, or, uh, he's going to take one prize here, so, hmm, interesting enough. I was wondering if he could do like a, like a uh, you know, bring up Zeora do Plasma Fist for a KO and then end him to two, but you know, we'll, we'll, see, we'll see how this progresses here. Not a lot of confidence in the moves that Eric's making right now. Rarely do you see uh, on Ultra Balls when you have those eggs mm -hmm. tilted the other way to signify you have them. Rarely do you see those physically picked up and put back in a hand. Mm -hmm. Typically players just shortcut. It's, it's generally known. Ultra Ball Prop eggs, Ultra Ball, mm -hmm. and you know that you propagated those eggs to use the Ultra Ball. Transform Ditto coming down. Eric presenting the deck. Jeff going to give it a quick little shuffle. Floatstone coming down on Roadblock Pseudo Udo. Energy coming down on Alolan Executor. And I think we're going to see a knockout on the, the Dancing Bird. Dancing Bird is going down. Zeoro is going to get promoted here. So we gotta we gotta get to that Tapu Koko Prism. That's for sure. Uh, step one here to be able to attack next turn. If not, he's just gonna be walling around Zerkatry. Uh, we probably could see actually a Lightning GX as well next turn. Uh, this turn to uh, add a card back into um, the prizes. What would be really cool actually if he ended the two and then the Lightning GX and only to put whatever card might be more <laughs> essential in right into the prizes. Yep, that, that's uh, I mean that's a great way to kind of try and slow Eric down a little bit, keep the chain of teammates from stopping. Mm -hmm. Now, Eric has used a couple uh, Versus Seekers, which, as we mentioned before, are important for this matchup. Grass Energy coming down on the Zerkatry GX. 
Um, wouldn't have mind to see that uh, grass energy go onto the shaman and step up and take a knockout? It wouldn't. Uh, well, shame is uh, thirty times. The thirty times four is one twenty. Oh, okay, so it would have been twenty yeah, short. Yeah, twenty yep. short there. So, I believe we just saw. It. Yep, there it is. Oh, we're gonna see it. Lightning GX gonna I come in. I like the way Jeffrey's navigated this, given given uh, themselves a chance here. My only concern here, with what they've with with what they've got going on, is that Jeff doesn't have enough time to close the door. Mm -hmm. Well. He has two. He has two fifty-five left. He takes. A, he, he won't be able to take a KO this time. Um, but if Eric, depending on Eric's turn there, oh, that's gonna be tough. He has to take a KO before the, t the time's called. If he can take a KO before time's called, it is doable. Tapu Koko Prism, off the draw. He's got an open bench space, which means you can fire up that Zerkatry Actually, right now. No, yeah. Now, now you can attack with Shaman. Now you can go Tapu Koko Prism. Ah, oh, Sudo Udo. It's KO'd. Yep. KO. Sudo was KO'd. Tapu Koko Prism tests the Shaman and the Zerkatry. Shaman. You can attack with Shaman and take a KO right now. Is there not a lightning in the discard pile? There might not be enough lightnings in the discard pile for him to do so. Uh, and also the, the Shaman, Shaman's attack is double grass. Mm. So kind of caught it caught caught in the middle both ways there for uh, for Jeffrey. Use his Dance of the Ancients to get Zerkatry up and going, ready to start swinging. Interested to see if we see a Lightning GX. Uh, nope, just a Rumbling Wire, Mill, and a Lowland Executor. Ooh, and the Rest is gone also. So N, how many cards does Eric have in hand? Does he have more than? Does he have more than three cards? I couldn't tell. He should only have three cards in hand. One, two. He has four well, cards. Well, draw in for turn. Well, you got end of two. So if you got end of two. He didn't get end of two. He got end of three. And he got end of three, and he never. Does like he have. It looks like he has two, let's see, have two prizes right now, so I'm saying. So if he had, he got end of two with two prizes, draw a card for turn, it's three, pri uh, three cards at hand. I think it's just off screen. I'm going to get a benefit of the doubt. I think the, uh, the other prize is just off screen. Okay. We're going to keep operating as if that's such. We'll have uh, one, one of the production people go just take a quick look, and we will keep rocking and rolling here. A little executor coming down after that Utcher Ball using the prop eggs. See, like, th that's just a very interesting difference of mechanics, right? He just ultra balled, was pitching a Cynthia and mm -hmm. announcing a prop egg, whereas the turn before pulled them back into the hand. That's bizarre to me. It's, it's interesting enough, but I think cause he knows he's going to let loose here and he wants to optimize his chance to draw stuff, so get rid of more stuff ca cars he had in his hand off the ultra ball gives a better chance to draw what he needs or whatever he's looking for. No, off his let my, loose. my concern is he just short card an ultra ball by saying Cynthia and a prop egg. And the turn before, he oh, physically okay. picked them up and put them back in his hand and then did mm -hmm. the Ultra Bowl. Okay. That seems bizarre to me. Yes. Anyways, let loose. Each player draw him four. Not a lot of time in the action, I think, for Jeff to close this one out. Eric might take it down one to zero. Yeah, it looks like that might be the case here. He can, you know, he's going to be able to attack in the next turn. He can't take three prizes here. I've not seen it here. Time is officially called right now. Um. Yeah, okay, I don't see the hand by the judge usually making the notion that time has been called, but it looks like Eric's going to play a little more defensive here and run the clock out here and re by retreating the little executor to, to the bench. Attaches, hard retreats, uh, yet, is is in the process of. Mm -hmm. um, going to ask Chris, go ahead and try and take three prizes. Must know time has been called or it's got to be close. Um Really just not giving Jeffrey any opportunity to to take three prizes. Mm -hmm. And Rumbling Wire, as good as it looked in the last game, it only deals 100 damage. And Alolan Executor, it's a, it's a beefy mon. Yep. And I, I think to your point there, I think uh, uh, the point at which you wanted to return or go to game two, I think was where Jeffrey may have done that. Because right now, I think Jeffrey's in a good spot uh, to take game, just not enough time to do so. I agree. I agree, especially with the – to be fair, players change their play styles depending on when time is called, how much time is left. You know, we might not have seen that double dragon energy come down for the hard retreat if there was still, let's say, 15 minutes on the clock. Uh, still curious as to what we've got going on here. Choice band coming down on the, on the injured. Nope, back to hand.
And Choice Band coming down on the active, undamaged Alolan Executor with the Egg Splat attack in the active. Lance Prism Star. Just discarding it in Paradise Draw for two. Pass over to Jeffrey. Has, has time been called officially yet? Okay, so we got the notion that time has officially been called. Uh, and Jeffrey's turn one, and as we know, uh, if Jeffrey truly has. Uh, yeah, there's, there's not Max Elixir hit? That's a late game Max Elixir right, right there. Max Elixir right there on the Shaman. Jeffrey yeah. didn't find him as early this time around as he did yeah. in game one. Yeah, fortunately there, yeah, there's not going to be enough time for him to take three knockouts. He was just a few, a few minutes too shy right there of uh, getting the strategy going, but um, not one to go away here. He's going to keep 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 running along here. Well, I mean, you're under the lights. Might as well uh, take advantage of it while you can. Yeah. Get your, get your style points. Let, let them know that, you know, this deck is this deck is still strong here. Let like, them know that you got a big old bag of no I don't quit. care how many omelets you throw at me. I'm going to cook them up. Let me build them up next, players, just to make sure round five pairings will be going up at 215. Shaman coming back. Using Flower Storm, 30 times the amount of basic energies on your side of the board. Mm -hmm. uh, easy knockout on that Alolan Executor. Jeff, Chris, and JC down to just two prizes with just not enough time to take them. And especially with Eric getting rid of all his energy like that, he doesn't even have to be concerned with this Shaman necessarily being knocked out. Yeah. Man, I'm not sure, you know, I feel like Eric can just pass here and be fine. So... If we truly are on turn two and there was no time extension, um, it seems almost elementary at this point. Eric can just pass on over to uh, to Jeff, give up the knockout, and say you didn't quite get there, kid. Yeah, I, th I wonder if he was eyeing down with any chance he could take multiple prizes in one turn. Uh, I'm looking at his list right now. Maybe he's uh, thinking like Rescue Stretcher, Hard Retreat, Attach Energy, I think he's Oracorio. Thinking, he's thinking Oracorio right now, yeah. Which you have to insulate yourself to that a little bit. Which is close. I mean, I'm sure sh with the Shaman on bench, oh, sorry, no, the Marsh Shadow on bench with seven right there. And then, yeah, okay. Jeff sees the writing on the wall. Eric taking a look, making sure that he doesn't have enough Pokemon to give up that two prize knockout yep. on uh, on a supernatural dance. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, putting one damage counter on your opponent's Pokemon for each Pokemon in their discard. Yeah, he probably could have propagated some of his eggs back to hand just to kind of little, have a little assurance with that as well uh, to make sure Orcorio doesn't get the extra damage output there. But. Um, nonetheless, Eric Smith taking a victory here uh, in round four. X Black Executor. Rayquaza GX, very super powered. Uh, didn't really get to see it uh, too, too mm -hmm. much in that second game, but found himself a good game plan and uh, brought it down to the wire, uh, trying getting that draw falling just a little short. I really, I really do like that he did find an additional strategy outside of just kind of, you know, obliterate and go right into Rayquaza GX and just, you know, you know hit everything there. And unfortunately, both games, he did not get to, like, optimal Rayquaza start, but still found a plan through Zerkatry and through some ends to get to the points where he did both games. So kudos to Jeffrey on how he played. Yeah, Zerkatry, the mills off Rumbling Wire were very good. Um, and that's kind of what you need sometimes in mm -hmm. those types of matchups. Uh, with that being said, that brings round four to a close. Eric Smith of Rare Candy TCG fame. Uh, <laughs> we're going to grab him for a winner's interview. Talk about Eggspot Executor. We'll be right back.